to Learning with Lisa. In today's video, we are going to be learning about the plants and animals that live in or near to rivers. While you are watching, keep a lookout for the little water vole that is hiding near the river and tell me at the end how many times you see it. Let's start by finding out what a river is. Well, a river is a natural stream of water that flows over land. The type of water is fresh water, unlike the sea that contains salt water. Rivers are found all over the world in any place where the ground is lower and can collect water. Rivers often form when moving water carves valleys into rocks and soil. Rivers are always moving and can vary quite drastically in size, from trickling streams to rivers that travel for many miles. Many different creatures visit or call the river home. Have you ever seen a quick flash of electric blue where walking beside the river? Well, that's the beautiful kingfisher. Kingfishers like to eat fish. And if you stay around long enough, you might be lucky to see one diving for its dinner. Herons also use the river to find food. This heron has its eye on a tasty eel. Many different sorts of fish live in the river, as well as smaller fish, larger fish, such as pike and roach can sometimes be seen. Ducks and swans use the river too. I love the springtime when their babies arrive. Look at this family of swans with their signets. When it starts to get dark, another creature uses the river. Otters like to come out at night to do a spot of fishing. They also enjoy a tasty fish or two. Now we've learnt about some of the animals that use the river, let's find out about the plants we can expect to see. Water lilies are a very common river plant. And willow trees are sometimes seen overhanging river banks. Here is an example of a willow tree along the River Avon in Bath. The types of plants that grow around rivers will vary depending on the river's location. But plants often choose to live along the edge of the river where the water is moving more slowly. In this photo, a baby duckling is searching for its food amongst the plants alongside the river's edge. Let's look at one of the largest rivers in the world. It is called the Amazon River and is 4,086 miles long and 62 miles wide in places. It is home to more than 2,000 fish species and it runs through three different countries in South America. Brazil, Colombia and Peru. Here are just some of the creatures you might find. Red-bellied piranha fish, paeta vampire fish, black caimum, river dolphin and the green anaconda snake which is the largest snake in the world and hunts in the Amazon River. Rivers are a very important part of the landscape. They provide fresh water for people, plants and animals all across the world. They even provide us with food too. Fishermen sometimes catch salmon for us to eat. Rivers provide people with a form of transport too. Some people earn their living on the river. 
Here is an example of a floating market in Vietnam. Can you see what they are selling? Sometimes people live on the river in houseboats. Only about 3% of the Earth's water is fresh water and can be used for drinking, washing or farming. It's actually quite a luxury in some parts of the world where people can quickly become ill if they are not able to find fresh water. Unfortunately, rivers are being polluted by us. Large factories built alongside rivers sometimes dump harmful chemical waste into the river. This can lead to fish dying. Another problem is when farmers and gardeners use chemical fertilizers to make their plants grow larger and also pesticides to kill unwanted insects. These chemicals can drain off from farmland and run into rivers. This can cause a green plant called algae to grow and if it grows too much it can be very harmful to the wildlife living in the river. Rivers also get polluted when people do not put their rubbish in the bin. Litter such as plastic bags and bottles can end up in the river and again cause injury to the wildlife. I expect you are wondering what you can do to help. Well, you can play your part by making sure you put all your rubbish in the bin. If not, litter you drop might end up in the river and harm the wildlife that is living there. You could also ask your grown-ups to help too. Remind them not to use chemical pesticides and fertilisers when gardening. You could also ask them to use eco-friendly cleaning products. These are things that have been made specially so they do not hurt the environment. You could also ask people to buy biodegradable products. These are things which break down much quicker than normal. Plastic carrier bags can take at least 100 years to break down once they have been thrown away, whereas a biodegradable bag may only take three years. We've now finished learning all about rivers. Let's do the quiz and see how much you can remember. What colour is a kingfisher? Pink? Red? Electric blue? A kingfisher is electric blue. What does a heron enjoy eating? Eels? Apples? Carrots? A heron likes to eat eels. What is a baby swan called? Swanette? Signet, Swanee. A baby swan is called a signet. When are you most likely to see otters fishing in a river? When it gets dark, at lunchtime, when it rains. Otters like to come out when it gets dark. Which one of these is harmful to rivers? Swans? Eco products? Pesticides? Pesticides can harm rivers. 
What can people do to help protect our rivers? Do more fishing, use eco products, stop eating salmon. The answer is use eco products. It's now time to look at some photos I took of my visits to some rivers. Before I say bye bye, how many times did you see the waterfall? I saw him eight times. I hope you enjoyed watching my video. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up as it really helps the channel. And if you haven't already, it would be really lovely if you subscribed. I hope to see you again soon, but bye bye for now. Bye.